It's now possible to clone humans. What's more, there are doctors ready and able to do it. Next, a hearing on the implications of human cloning. In the meantime, I am taking further steps to prevent human cloning. Human cloning. Human cloning. Human cloning. The cloning of a human being. Human cloning might sound far-fetched to some, but it's actually been a topic of discussion and speculation for a very long time. The issue of human cloning first gained widespread attention all the way back in 1971, when James D. Watson wrote an article titled Moving Toward the Clonal Man for the Atlantic. Now, Watson wasn't some random dude. A few years before his Atlantic article, Watson won the Nobel Prize for making one of the greatest scientific discoveries of all time. In 1953, Watson discovered the DNA molecule. In his Atlantic article, which, to repeat, was published all the way back in 1971, Watson warned that human cloning was much closer to happening than people realized. He wanted people to start paying attention to the issue so they could make informed decisions about the ethical and moral issues that would arise from human cloning. Watson wrote, I would hope over the next decade, wide-reaching discussion would occur about the manifold problems that are bound to arise from human cloning. After this article appeared, the issue of human cloning just exploded. If you look back on newspapers and magazines of the early to mid-70s, human cloning articles are absolutely everywhere. The scientists and doctors featured in these articles said it wasn't a question of if a human clone would be created, it was a question of when a human clone would be created, if it hadn't been done already. Nobel Prize winning geneticist Dr. Joshua Lederberg. There is nothing to suggest any particular difficulty accomplishing cloning in mammals or man. With strenuous effort, genetic surgery could be put within our grasp in as little as 10 or 20 years. University of Illinois microbiologist Dr. Kimball Atwood said, With a crash program, cloning a human could be done now. Dr. Kurt Hirschhorn, who is Chief of Medical Genetics at Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York and the former president of the American Association of Human Genetics, not only is cloning a human possible, but probable. It will take place much sooner than people realize. This massive 1974 human cloning feature in the Cincinnati Enquirer claimed human cloning would be, quote, the most drastic biological change in all of humankind's recorded history. Dr. Landrum Shettles was dubbed the Clone Doctor and became a minor celebrity in the 1970s. He first became popular when he wrote the bestseller How to Choose the Sex of Your Baby, and he was considered one of the pioneers of human cloning experiments. He went so far as to say that cloning was, quote, easy to perform. In the late 1970s, the issue of human cloning exploded when journalist David Rorvig published a nonfiction book named In His Image. The book was an instant bestseller and a national sensation, and it is a fantastic read which I would highly recommend. Rorvik was a very well-known science writer who published multiple articles in the past about human cloning, and he claimed that an extremely wealthy 67-year-old man contacted him with a shocking proposition. He wanted Rorvik to use his contacts to help him assemble a team of scientists who could create a human clone of himself. The old man, referred to as Max and never identified to this day, was willing to pay anything to hire the best scientists and buy the best equipment. Money was no object. Upon its release, the book was hugely controversial. Rorvik was subjected to intense pressure from the media to reveal Max's identity. And when he refused, the media branded the book a hoax. Rorvik insisted the book's events were real, and he never did reveal the identity of Max or his clone son. Throughout the 1970s, clone fever raged on. If you look back on books from that era, there are just a ton of books about cloning. The Boys from Brazil was a best-selling novel and movie about Nazis resurrecting the Third Reich by creating hundreds of clones from Adolf Hitler's DNA. Look for the boys from Brazil before they look for you. And a human cloning gag kit was even released to the public. The issue of cloning died down for a bit, but it came roaring back in the 1990s when Dolly the Sheep became the first mammal to be cloned. Well, officially, at least. Dolly was everywhere for a while, but this new attention given to cloning kind of confused a lot of people. Cloning a human had been described as not only possible, but easy by leading scientists two decades earlier. So, what was the big deal about a sheep being cloned? At any rate, cloning was back in the spotlight, and this time politicians got involved. There were a ton of federal hearings in Washington, D.C. about human cloning. Next, a hearing on the implications of human cloning. Bill Clinton even proposed a five-year ban on federal funding for human cloning experiments. Therefore, today I am issuing a directive that bans the use of any federal funds for any cloning of human beings. 
And this is honestly just pretty unbelievable that the sitting U.S. president proposed federal legislation banning funding of human cloning. A lot of people will claim human cloning is far-fetched or something that's unrealistic. But if it's so far-fetched, why did the president propose a ban on human cloning almost three decades ago? But President Clinton's ban on using federal funds for human cloning had no effect on companies in the private sector. They could use their money however they wanted. And before long, one company made headlines with a shocking announcement. CloneAid was a private company established in 1997 to make human cloning available to anyone who was willing to pay. The CloneAid website is actually still online, and on their site, CloneAid recommends their cloning service to, among other things, families who want to create an exact replica of a deceased family member. One of the founders, Bridget Basselier, was everywhere for a while in the mid-1990s. In 2001, she announced that CloneAid had successfully birthed a clone baby. I'm very, very pleased to announce that the first baby clone uh, is born. She was born yesterday at 11.55, and we call her Eve between us. Since CloneAid was based in Canada, they weren't covered by U.S. laws restricting human cloning. And apparently CloneAid is still around even today. More recently, rapper Kid Boo claimed he was a clone created by CloneAid. I was cloned by CloneAid in Canada. My model number is 0112568 if anyone wants to see the registration and cloning. And he even did a live stream with what he claimed was his clone, though it's impossible to verify if this is legit or a camera trick. A lot of y'all are talking about the clone being fake. I thought I was lying about being cloned. What y'all gotta say now? You see him? We got the same tattoos, same hair, same genetic structure. Here's my clone. Go ahead. What do you got to say now? I mean, I'll wait all day. In the past decade, cloning animals has become pretty much common for the general public. Many farmers have cloned livestock for a long time now, and there are a ton of stories about celebrities who've cloned their dead pets. In fact, anyone can clone a living or dead pet for around $50,000. The cloning of horses is very common in the equestrian world, and it's also very lucrative. A single gene from an award-winning horse can sell for upwards of $200,000. It's proven to be very controversial, and some competitions have even banned cloned horses from competing. Now there are a ton of rumors about celebrities and politicians being cloned, and this video would be a million hours long if we got into all that. But those are all rumors, and what we've covered here are facts. It's a fact that human cloning was everywhere back in the 1970s. It's a fact that many leading scientists in the 1970s said human cloning was not just possible, but easy to accomplish. It's a fact that the government has held numerous hearings on the legality of human cloning, and it's a fact that Bill Clinton proposed legislation banning federal funds for human cloning. Given those facts, and considering the rate that science and technology has advanced in the past 50 years, just what is possible today?